Hey there, I'm Lee Ullman here with some big news from the National Young Farmers Coalition. We're partnering with Heritage Radio Network on a special season of The Farm Report. It's all about what's happening with the Farm Bill and how it impacts farmers and eaters. I am growing diversified vegetables on land that's been in our family for 150 years. And so with the pandemic, gentrification, property values going up, we had to sell the land and we lost it. Join us as we uncover the untold stories behind this massive piece of legislation that shapes how we grow our food, what we eat, and so much more. The problems we have had, those are things that come from earlier Farm Bill and USDA policy, right? Like Earl Butts, get big or get out. You know, it's my responsibility to know not only what I'm eating, but then like how, how that all came to be and realize like, wow, like this piece of legislation, all this money, like it's technically something that I support as a taxpayer. While Congress debates the next Farm Bill, this is not just an invitation to listen. It's a call to action. Be part of the conversation. Subscribe to the Farm Report on Heritage Radio Network wherever you listen to podcasts. Hey, what's up? This is Jack Inslee, host of Full Service Radio. You're listening to Heritage Radio Network, broadcasting live from Bushwick, Brooklyn. If you like this show, visit heritageradionetwork.org for thousands more. This is Cynthia Cherish Mallon, Reverend DJ Cherish the Love, and you are listening to Primary Food on Heritage Radio Network. And before I forget, let me tell you how to reach out to me and get my attention on social media, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, at DJ Cherish the Love. That is spelled L-U-V, and hashtag using primary food. Heritage underscore radio and hashtag Rev Love. So the name of the show is Primary Food, and let me tell you what that's all about. So the food that we eat, we consider that, you know, like the food here at Roberta's, our lovely pizza we're watching these people eat right in front of us. Mm, actually, kind of. <laughs> Every time I turn and look, I get distracted the wine, the food, we consider that to be secondary food. And primary food is everything else in life that nourishes us before we sit down and eat. So that's our relationships, our job, our spirituality, our physical activity, our creativity. So today I have a really cool guest with me who I feel like is is creative and working in food. So it's a great combination of primary and secondary food. My friend... Eris Johnson. Hey. <laughs> She's laughing. You're laughing at yourself. Because that was a grand, grand uh, introduction. Well deserved. And with Eris, we've got Trey. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Trey here. Trey is my favorite and one and only assistant. He'll always be my favorite, I think. Oh. So, uh, you know what? Let's, let's talk about Eris. Eris is, is very cool, and she and I work together. We've known each other for some years now. Yes. We worked at a restaurant. 2011. Wow. Yeah. 2011? Okay. (laughs) So we worked at a restaurant in Astoria. I was working doing design and marketing for a restaurant called Sugar Freak, and Eris was doing the the, um, kitchen brilliance at the time. (laughs) I was. (laughs) (laughs) Because Eris's uh, expertise is from where? I'm from New Orleans. Born and raised. Yeah, tell us more about that. Yeah, I mean, that's it. I'm from New Orleans. Uh, I've been living in New York for uh, about 15 years and counting, but spent all my formative years in New Orleans, Louisiana. And who, yeah, Jack likes that. (laughs) (laughs) Who were your food or cooking influences when you were growing up in NOLA? I mean, when I was growing up, I didn't know I had any food influences because, like, just the food culture in New Orleans is, that's just it. You just eat. Mm. 
So we were just eating. I didn't realize it was a food culture until I moved away wow. from <laughs> Louisiana. I'm yeah. so I'm drooling. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what were your what were your favorite what were your favorite things to to What are your favorite food memories actually growing up? Uh, I mean, you know, my grandmother's food, Mm -hmm. like eating all the basics, all the classic New Orleans dishes, crawfish etouffee, Mm -hmm. red beans and rice with smoked sausage. Uh, What else? (laughs) Etouffee. Is 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 that how you say it? it, Yeah, etouffee. 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 Hey, etouffee. What's up? (laughs) Yeah, and like uh, okra and shrimp. Like all that good stuff. My God, I love okra. gumbo, right? Oh, gumbo! Mm-hmm. Yeah, how could I mm-hmm. forget gumbo? Crawfish, po' boys, like oh my God, all so the good. classics, and all of that—that's for breakfast, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what is a breakfast? Breakfast? Hmm. I mean, when I was younger, it was like corn pops, but like grits. <laughs> oh my God. Grits and eggs. I'm like, gonna I'm gonna gain ten pounds in the end at by the end of this episode. Just, so you good. will like, <laughs> just listen. You will. What about the fried breads? I heard the fried. Is that is that a New Orleans thing? Fried bread? Yeah. No. No. no Never no. heard right. of it. Okay. okay. Right. Another, another, <laughs> another region. Another, another region, region of delicious. Okay. Delicious foods. <laughs> And the foods that, you know, when I go down, down to New Orleans, there are all these foods that the tourists, you know, go and, and check out, like the muffalettas and things like that. Is that, is that pure New Orleans stuff? Or? It is. It is. Okay. It is. It is. Like New Orleans was settled by the French, the Spanish from Spain mm-hmm. and uh, Africans. Mm. And so the food is a mixture of all those cultures. Mm. So like the muffalata has oh and also Italians there's a lot of Italians uh, in Louisiana so the muffalata that's part of like the it- Italian influence and then uh like the way we make certain sauces mm-hmm. it's like the French influence um the use of like a lot of tomatoes like that's the Spanish influence oh wow okay yeah so like if you go to Spain you go to Africa I went to South Africa and had a crawfish bisque with scallops in it mm. and it tasted like I was sitting in my grandmother's oh wow, wow. <laughs> wow. yeah that's very crazy. interesting yeah so that's so interesting because it makes sense now so there's the Italian influence there's the French influence obviously yeah. with with sauces and and desserts beignets yeah things like that yeah oh, yeah, yeah the beignet. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh maybe that's what you were talking about. Yeah, that that fried you were thinking the maybe. Fried? No, I was thinking like uh, uh, hoe cakes. Ho- oh no, that's not. Our that's area. not. That's not that. Okay, that's, that's not. not that. right, come on, get together, <laughs> Trey. <laughs> Leave right. the room. Get your yeah, get your life right now, Trey. Right. That's some cakes with a sassy name, though. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> that's my nickname at night. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Now, when you bring your food back, like, so you bring your food culture up here to New York, like, yes. how is it received by your friends and, and clients? Uh, I mean, people love it. Like, everybody loves New Orleans food because it's, it's different. Like, to me, I think it's like the only, like, true American food, mm. in my opinion. Yes, yeah, I was mm. going to say that's a strong in my, opinion. In my non-biased <laughs> opinion. <laughs> Yeah, so people receive it well because just the flavors are different. Like, it's not soul food. It's not southern Mm -hmm. food. It's New Orleans food. It's Louisiana cooking. And we have a whole, we just have a whole other situation going. That is so interesting. So how would you, how do you discern it from not being soul food and not being southern food? Like, give me a little bit more about that because that's the first time I've heard that. Um, And I like it. Oh, okay. I like that a lot. Like, I'll give you an example, like, for instance, like, collard greens. Mm -hmm. So I got to New York, and, like, everybody's like, oh, you're from Louisiana. You must know how to cook some banging collard greens. (laughs) Like, I'd never eaten collard greens until I came to New York. I grew up eating mustard greens, Ah. a mixture of mustard greens and turnip greens. Mm. So, Mm. like, that's one difference. But, like, if if you would go just to Alabama... Or Georgia, I'm sure everybody's eating collard greens there, even though it's so close. But 
New Orleans, we were doing something different. And I, that's like a, just a regional thing. Yeah. The vegetation in that area. Yeah. That's very interesting. Now, see, this I didn't know. Yeah. I was <laughs> Green's ignorant. I am surprised. <laughs> until, until now. Surprise information. Now, this is very cool. I'm so happy to have you here because Eris, you know, I'll tell you Trey a little bit about Eris and everyone who's listening. Eris is a very hard worker. She impresses me so much. <laughs> All the time, and she's so humble about it. But when I think of Eris, I think of Rise and Grind. Mm. Eris is all about the grind. And I've known her years, and she's like one of the get up at 4 or 5 in the morning, get to work, do her thing, do what she's got to do. And and I, I was so blown away by a couple of weeks ago. She had written, actually, maybe it was a month ago you posted on Facebook that you had an idea to put out an e-book, an e-recipe book, right? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, uh, um, an e-recipe book shows up in my inbox. And I was like, <laughs> she did it. You know, like, she did it. She was, like, up in the mornings writing this recipe book using spices that she's making. Oh. So Eris has this great line of spices called Eris the Chef. Spice blends. Spice blends. Yep. And, AKA and ATC Spice Blends. ATC Spice Blends. And, and that's what I want to talk about here because I love when... Someone, a woman, takes the initiative to start her own company, food-based company, awesome, Thank passion, you. awesome, Dope. and it tastes good. And and let's talk about the spices. Let's. Look, what did you bring here? So, we'll I do just a taste test here. Even. Oh yeah, we could do a taste test. So I have a little. I mean, if you want to hear a little background Absolutely. about the Tell spices, me the story about how you came up with what made you decide instead of using spices wholesale or getting spices somewhere else. Why did you create your own line? Well, I actually started creating them uh, at the restaurant we were working at where we were together just because uh, I was a chef there and it was a New Orleans style restaurant. And so my line cooks in the kitchen were for, from different places, Italy, um, Central America, mm -hmm. um, somebody from South America also. And so everybody has all of these different flavors. And New Orleans, the flavor profiles are very specific. So in order to create consistency in the recipes, like, I just had a couple of spice blends. I had what is now my uh, Cajun spice blend. Mm -hmm. And then I also had um, a different version of what is now my blackening spice. And so, like, let's say for red beans, I'll be like, okay, two pounds of kidney beans, uh, three onions, mm. green pepper, and then one cup of the spice to keep the recipes um, consistent. Okay. Yeah, so that's how I started spice blends, but they weren't ATC spice blends at that time. So I started traveling a lot around the world, and I would come back and be dead broke. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Travel equals dead broke. Yeah. yeah. I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, man, I have to be making money at all times like I need to create something mm. where I could be making money whether I'm on another continent whether right. I'm sleeping and so I was like oh yeah I made these spices a couple of years ago like I could sell those that ought to be easy I love it and the quality of your spices do you have like some sort of a like a standard that you want to stick to or yeah, definitely. All natural, uh, no preservatives, uh, nothing you can't pronounce, basically. Um, that makes sense. All the ingredients are just, it is what it is. If I say it's onion, garlic, black pepper, and paprika, that's what's in it. It's nothing special. So if it's lemon in it, it's actual lemon juice, actual oh, wow lemon zest like it's no lemon oil with alcohol in it and it's like lemon oil with alcohol in it ew yeah yeah that sounds terrible well yeah that's how <laughs> that's how it happens if you buy it, yeah yeah so it's all natural that's the truth about spices in the market <laughs> you gotta yeah. keep it simple you know? yeah yeah and i also try to keep the sodium low mm. uh because that's another thing do you have um, like a personal do you have personal stories about health that influence how you create these spices? Uh sure. Well, I have uh type 2 diabetes and I also have hypertension which is high blood pressure. So, um I was eating like 
different store bought Mm -hmm. spice blends like very common brands and like afterwards like I would have like maybe swelling in my feet or like my body would retain a lot of water and then after a certain point they just started tasting too salty or maybe too spicy Mm. and so I'm like you know some dishes I'm making I don't want it to be spicy but I put this one seasoning in Mm -hmm. it and so now it's spicy and I didn't want it to be so just as a chef I was putting my own ingredients in my own blends of spices anyway that's so interesting so imagine you had your own spices back when you were working with now Eris has a very cool background too working professionally for Danny Meyer right yeah Gordon Ramsay yeah to name a couple who else uh there's so many Sue Torres I uh, worked uh, at Whole Foods Market yeah which for is a couple pretty years. freaking cool so yeah. imagine you had your own spices mm-hmm. to work with and everything would be so much better in the right. world right <laughs> do you have a, do you have any Gordon Ramsay stories that's the first thing that <laughs> uh, what kind of radio show is that <laughs> <laughs> what Jack what Jack says earn your curse words that's what he says <laughs> Well, he's a nice guy, PG, right? I mean, NC seventeen. Yeah, you know, you know, we go deep. We can, we, we can know, go very deep. We actually. can talk. Yeah, we can talk about it. You know, all I say is Gordon Ramsay is a very nice man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer. Yeah, and all, but all of the rest of the chefs that were hired to uh, to be in charge uh, of the restaurant. Um, they were very nice people, and they used a lot of adjectives. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just in case the reach yeah. is reaching them. Yeah, just to get their point across. <laughs> they made sure that they all their points got across, all of them. So his, his, his persona on TV is a TV... I mean, it's a TV thing. No, that's basically the persona of most European chefs. That's just what it is, yeah. It's just shocking because America is like, what? Like you said, what to that grown man's face? But meanwhile, right now across the pond, like some grown man is getting shamed. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my! Publicly in the kitchen. Exactly. Yeah. Wow, that's so fascinating. But for overcooking his scallops. Uh, Oh, I just got a chill down my back. <laughs> it could be it could be a very uh it could be a very hostile environment in the kitchen, am I wrong? Oh no, it is a very hostile no, environment. It could be. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. you know, that's why I love kitchen stories. Like one of my favorite things to ask is, do you have any like kitchen injury stories? Like Oh yeah, tons. <laughs> do you like... hear <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> best you... kitchen injury story. We'll swap I mean stories. best? <laughs> Because they, I mean, uh, one time I was uh, basting some fish in a pan, and I don't know, sometimes like basting, so just in case you don't have an idea what basting is, it's basically if you have some liquid in a pan, in this case it was like hot butter and oil and garlic. Oh, where is this going? And so you tilt your pan, and you just spoon that hot liquid over whatever it is. Uh and that you're cooking Uh over and over so the motion is kind of hypnotic so I guess I must have dazed off and like basted basted and basted my hand oh my god you can still see to this day it's like still some discoloration um, oh yeah right here so like the toughness of being in the kitchen like you get burned people get burned all the time but I tell the the chef in charge I'm like chef you know I think this is a bad one and he's like oh you okay Johnson like just keep going like meanwhile it's like a big like bubble yeah (laughs) I'm like like, I don't know, chef. Under. Like, I could hardly hold a pan anymore. Oh, wow. And so, like, I continued to cook for the rest of that service. What? And oh. I think, looking back, it was probably like a third degree <laughs> burn. Oh, God. Okay, but that's not, that, no. That's, that's, that's not pre- okay. That's pretty bad. I mean. <laughs> that's pretty bad. It's normal. <laughs> yeah, like, it's normal, though. That's, pretty standard that's the, the culture. Kitchen. Yeah. Do you, do you mm-hmm. have any, any kitchen uh, accidents, injuries? I always worked, like, kind of front of the house. I never I never worked in the back house. But I did have a lot of drops as a, mm. as a waiter. I'm pretty clumsy. You, I wasn't weren't, the, you weren't the chef's favorite I, No, I wasn't. I really wasn't. <laughs> I really wasn't the best in the, in the front. You know, there's this one time where, like, I was bringing out this whole bottle of wine and two glasses, and someone kind of knocked into me, 
and I like wobble with it and then I noticed that there was like a baby in like a high chair <laughs> right in front of me so I basically just like decided it'd be a good idea just like throw it all on the ground like right before I hit the baby basically <laughs> and just, just smash the entire thing because I didn't want to hit the baby with know, wine with wine right that's so a good move. I didn't want the bottle to hit the baby so I just smashed it you know that's a really it looked good like mess. I was spiking so those were your only that was your that's only really choice that's a really good idea that was, that was in my mind at that moment in that moment that was your was only choice I was thinking that this is how I make the best of a bad situation <laughs> So. And and for the visual, everyone, Trey is six foot five. Yes, so yeah. yes, yes. Was, <laughs> six foot five it was slamming. It was a long wine glasses. It was long a long crash. trip. Long, long trip. Because that trip. didn't scare the baby. Is that all right? <laughs> no. I thought it better to scare than injure, you know, someone's child. Because you know, <laughs> preservation of human life. You know, that, that's that's right. Of course. Of course. Uh, we have Jack in the booth there. Do, do you have any uh, kitchen injury stories? No, I don't. I only I only worked at a pizza place when I was a kid, but uh, no no injuries yet. I burn myself at home all the time. Though. <laughs> uh, you know what? That counts. That counts. Yeah, like like putting a cast iron skillet like in the oven for like oh, for like yeah. forty minutes, and then you just go to grab it like an idiot. You forget, <laughs> yeah. You just forget. Yeah, I've, I've got a few of those. And, and then you burn your mic hand. Exactly. Because <laughs> we know about mics and Jack. Now that we know he's a rapper. So oh. I have a pretty, like, oh, you're going to like this story. I was on a, a, on a boat, some sort of quasi-cruise ferry thing in Greece. Mm-hmm. And I'd sliced my thumb, like, so deep. Oh. Like, really, like, the kind of deep where it doesn't bleed yet. Mm. And you just see, like, white meat. And you're yeah. like, holy, oh, God, what do I do I, with this? I'm going to faint. Yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> it was like that. And I cut it on my zipper. So the, the actual metal pull of my zipper snapped. Oh, wow. And as I was pulling my finger up the zipper, I just sliced my finger open. Like, oh, wow. Like oh, an inch God. long and deep. I'm holding my finger on a Greek boat. Uh, and I don't know the word for help or anything like that. <laughs> so I'm running around this boat and I'm like showing and I'm asking for band-aids and no one knows what band-aids are. Right. So I finally, I'm like, okay, who's going to know what to do with a cut? I go to the kitchen. Yeah. And I go and I'm asking for a band-aid wrap paper, right. paper, and I'm showing them my cut. And the chef looks at it and he makes a face like, hmm. He goes into some sort of a container and he pulls out a can of white acrylic spray paint and spray paints my thumb. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he takes my thumb, shakes the can. I'm thinking it's like first aid spray. Then he sprays it and I'm standing there with a white thumb. Oh, my God. Spray paint. <laughs> that, that, white fu- spray paint. And and he says something and I'm trying to wrap it. And he's like, no, no, no. Like, don't touch. Oh, he's like, let it uh, dry. Let the, let the graffiti dry on my finger. Right? Mm. So I'm walking around. I go back to my friend and she's looking at my thumb like, what the hell happened to you? <laughs> she's like. <laughs> well, you came back with a white thumb, right. and I'm like, I don't know what to do. Three days later, that thing healed. What? That's a so new one. my doctor told me that you know when you you just like manage to keep it shut, yeah, like, keep it closed, it'll heal. Oh. So if you have a bandaid on it, you're messing with it, yeah, getting wet, this, this, and that. He basically sealed the wound for me, mm-hmm. and he knew to keep freaking Krylon. <laughs> yeah. <on end. laughs> oh, that's and a good one. Spray painted. I mean, I really don't advise it's probably no. really poisonous. Yeah. But, but that's what happened. I mean, you nice. lived. You lived. You're here. I lived. And that, you know, look at my thumb. You can barely see the the scar of it. The miracle of the body. You know, it's what? like kitchen wisdom right there. I yeah. Tell you, and my, you know, my body's been through a lot of chemical weird stuff. Like, okay, so this past year through chemo, my tongue turned blue. Yeah, and my taste buds went all crazy. Yeah, so that's why I'm so glad you brought spices. Because let's let's see like where my taste buds are at now. Let's do a taste test. All right, what you brought? Wait, what happened to your taste buds? Though, like, was stuff? Yeah, you know, chemo and your taste buds. Something happens, and and my tongue did one of those things where like some people on chemo, their tongue actually turns blue. Oh wow! Yeah, and I started to taste metals and things where there was no metal. Oh wow! And my lasting. I guess damage, but it's kind of a gift of a damage. Is now I can eat spicy food like oh. I've never. Like <laughs> I can drink a bottle of hot sauce now. 
Don't like, do it. <laughs> <laughs> now, the problem is I have consumed a lot of hot sauce now. Now, my tongue doesn't feel it, but my stomach bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure for I suffer. Sure. But it yeah. tastes so good. Yeah. In a way I've never experienced So before. you can taste it, but it, the, the heat doesn't the bother heat you. Is, there's no heat. Wow. And that's not how my life was ever. In only right. 39 years before that. That's cool. I know. It's cool. But my stomach is like, I hate you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so you could do like some ghost pepper sauce well, and everything. I want to try that. And I want to do like a, a, a hot food competition thing and not tell anyone I've kind of got like. Do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. Got the food competition thing exactly. going. Let me manage your career. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got three samples here. Let's see what, what's going on here. Yes, I do. So I brought some broccoli to put it on. All right. I don't know if y'all want to just taste the spices and do like a blind tasting. Let's do a and, blind taste. And kind of see if you could. I'm going to be honest. Tell. I can see if I could tell what's in there. Yeah. I'm good at this. I'm bad at this. But I I'll tell like you, though, I have, right. been, I, I have had some of Eris' spices because I'm a big fan. And I've been abusing your spices at home. <laughs> I, I, this is what I've been doing. I've been, you know, that candy fun dip. <laughs> What's that? You know, it's like you stick your that oh, yeah, candy yeah. in the, like the stick. And yeah, I've been yeah, yeah. fun dipping into her spices. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's super unhygienic, and anyone who visits me now is going to know that I'm kind of like abusing the spices. <laughs> so don't, you know, don't hate me for that. It's just delicious. It's like actually really that, so good. That's the do- that's a ringing endorsement right there. <laughs> it is. It's a ring. I was like, I'll just eat it. I'll just just it is. It's like that. It's so good. All right. Yeah, I have to record it. you. <laughs> So we got three packs. Harris has got here. Let's see. I'll just sprinkle some. I'll start. I'll start. uh, See what we got. I'll start slow. I'm supposed to close my eyes, right? Yeah. Just don't. Just try not to read the front of the package. (laughs) (laughs) So tell us about um, you know when when you make your spices. You probably know this one. I might know this one. Yeah. When you make your spices. Mm Hmm. What's your, what's your, do you have rituals? Do you have? I have recipes. Recipes, yeah. Okay, let's see. I'm going to taste this. This one is taste delicious. Thank you. (laughs) Oh, okay. Mm. Oh. Mm. Ooh. This is my, my Cajun friend. Yes. (laughs) This is my Cajun friend. This is the Cajun, yeah. I know this one because I I lick this one like every Mm -hmm. other day. And this This Cajun spice. I've been Thank dumping you. this on kale. Mm. I've been dumping it on potatoes. I've been dumping it on broccoli, on lots of things, on rice. Yeah, kind of uh, designed mm. my spices like the Gap and Old Navy designed their clothes. Like, <laughs> I don't know if people <laughs> notice, but like Gap and Old Navy clothes, everything is made to go with everything. Yeah. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah, so the Cajun spice is actually a good collaborator with all the other spices. Mm-hmm. So what comprises Cajun? Because I taste sweet, I taste the heat. Can oh. Cajun. Can I, can I try? Can Ooh, I he's going to try. He's sure. Try. Okay, so so onion. Yes. Garlic. Yes. Paprika. Yes. Uh, is there any basil in there? No. No, no basil. Oof. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, that's yeah. a really that's a that's a big mistake right there. Okay, that's all I got. I got those. Well, things. there are no herbs. No herbs. No herbs. No herbs. Yeah. Okay. Jack is a big New Orleans fan. Can you guess what's in the in in? He's like, I'm no, no googling, Jack. <laughs> no. I'm watching. No, you. I, I mean, I haven't, I haven't tasted it, so I would I would imagine maybe cumin is in there. No, 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 no. I like cumin though. Cumin. Yeah, I do have a, I do have a uh, keep cumin in mind. Keep cumin. <laughs> <laughs> Mental right. note. All right. Yeah, so well, cayenne's got to be in there. Yes, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. All right, what is it? Yeah, so it's garlic, uh, onion, mm. cayenne, paprika, salt, black pepper. Yep. Shoot, what else mm. is in there? Love. And love. <laughs> and love. It's actually one more, but I won't say what the last there one is. There you go. That's smart. You gotta, you gotta Keep buy that it. secret. Yeah. You gotta Keep buy it. Th- Yes, Keep that that's secret. delicious. Actually, what I love about your your spices is it tastes so clean. Mm. Thank you. It yep. doesn't taste like that, you know, extra funky kind of yeah, you know, been sitting around thing. It tastes no. really clean. Like I just made this like day before yesterday. I love it. <laughs> Let's taste the next one because I feel like okay. I feel like I just want to lick my hand. Cool. 
I'm not even licking my <laughs> Some kind of cat or something. Like that. <laughs> All right, Miss Fun Dip. All right, Fun Dip. Everybody's fun looking dip. at everyone's looking at us in here like, <laughs> why are they just <laughs> licking why their they, hands? Why are these people on the mic why licking their hands? Why is she opening these, these tiny people? bags, sprinkling mm. something into their hand? Mm. Oh, my God. Oh my god That's it? delightful Lemon Thank you That's lemon <laughs> Yeah there's mm. some lemon in there for that's sure Some lemon and salt Oh my gosh That's lemon salt What do you call this yes. one That's chilling and grilling That's my favorite Chilling uh, yeah. and grilling Chilling and grilling Wait a minute The slogan what? for this one is Some heat for your meat <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead <laughs> yeah. Go right ahead Not fun <laughs> No <laughs> Okay wait Time. Huh. I like that. Time. Oof. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Parsley. Mm-hmm. Lemon. Mm. Roasted garlic. Roasted garlic. Okay. Cumin, Cumin, which you just mentioned. Jack. Jack in the back. Yep. I can't oh. taste it, so. <laughs> yeah, no, we got, we got you, Jack. We're going yeah. <laughs> to save some. <laughs> All right. Hit you with some of this later. Uh, and this one other secret that you won't tell. <laughs> no, I will tell. I just want to see if you guys mm. could taste it. Um, ca- I can't. Cayenne? Isn't that the cayenne? Is no. I, I, can't, I can't figure it out. There's some smoked paprika in there. Oh. Smoked paprika. Mm. But that even, that's not even the that's one. That's not the okay. one. Okay. There's dill. Mm. Oh, dill. Oh. Yeah. Oh, God, so good. Yeah. Seeds, all right, all not right. dill, dill weed. Yeah, dill seeds. Okay. Yeah. So, would you so cru- do you crush them up? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I blend all the spices myself too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just so, like in a regular blender, or no? Okay. And a spice, like a spice oh, blender. Okay. Yeah. A spice mill. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Spice mill. That's so delicious. Yep. So that's chilling and grilling. That's that next level, right there. Thank you. Get yourself a spice <laughs> mill. Yeah. yeah and get this one. one. Last and this one. This is the final one. Okay. Here, wait, I have to clean my hands real quick. Sorry. <laughs> okay. right. Oh, I know what this is. Right, you got this one? Yeah, I throw, okay, this, I I throw this on like <laughs> potatoes like all the time. I eat a lot of potatoes. Oh, yeah. Mmm. 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 Mm. 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 Right, sorry. Um, if it's not, is there some mustard seed in there? No. No? Mmm. That's okay. so good. <laughs> that is <Salt>. jerk. <laughs> That's jerk. Seasoning. Jerk. Oh, yeah. the jerk seasoning. Mm. And that has like so good. 13 different herbs and spices. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So I love you your name blend. Those, you're a G. Okay. I love that your jerk seasoning is in super sweet because I used to have jerk seasoning that was like, yeah. I could see the sugar granules in it. And I was really? Like, That's wow. That's way sweet. Is there sugar in there now? Yeah. But just a little it's bit. It's brown sugar, yeah, but mm-hmm. not much, yeah. Okay. But you're using okay. brown sugar. Yeah, and then That's there's, nice. oh. there's also cinnamon in there, too. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's Ooh. so, so good. maybe if you're getting like a lot of sweet. Sometimes yeah. cinnamon is like a tricky, tricky spice. But in the past, I had like a subpar quality mm. one. So they use a lot of white granulated white sugar as filler. Mm. And, and you know, we get That's addicted rude. to the sugar. I know yeah. it's so rude, right? So <laughs> rude. My parents is like, that is the rudest thing. So discourteous. Right? Yeah. That is so nice. delicious. So you, you use your spices and you're, you're working with a cooking program not too far from here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell, tell us about that. Yeah. So I work... Um, as a freelance chef at a company called Cook Unity, mm. and Cook it's Unity. basically uh, it's a meal delivery, a chef-run meal delivery uh, company, um, and basically all professional chefs go into the kitchen every day and prepare meals and their are own recipes. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, and so basically the same day we cook it, you receive it the absolute same day. Wow. So like. You get your dinner at five. Like we just finished, like cooking and packing it at like three. This wow. is so good. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> like right yeah. now, I'm holding in my hand uh, one of Eris's pan seared chicken with Brussels roasted Brussels sprouts, which oh, wow. is the number one dish in the company. Yeah, and it's it's really cool. So there's a picture of you. There's yes. a profile of you on the tag. It says learn more at www.cookunity.us. And it tells your story on this as well. That's so cool. Yeah. And yeah. this company is located just 
blocks just from blocks here. from here. Yeah, yeah, and they deliver uh, in Manhattan only for now. Wow. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I think from like Lower Manhattan up to like maybe 110th. I want to say. Well, that's very cool, and yeah. I like that it says here it's kids friendly, nuts free, soy free, hormone free. Yes. That's healthy like meals. Healthy meals. We is use their organic thing. produce and everything. Yeah. So it's like get to know your chef. So. You know, I mean, how often do you go to a restaurant? You have no idea who's in the back cooking your food. Exactly. Ooh, that's so disturbing. The more <laughs> I think about that, it is Stranger disturbing. danger. <laughs> 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 food stranger danger. Yeah. I love the directions on this. In the microwave, recommended. Pour gravy on top. <laughs> yeah. Love my, it. My gravy is serious. This You'll is, see. You'll call really me cool. after you eat that. I'm going to call you. Yeah. I, I, had, a, I had a question, Aris. So, yeah. you, know, from, I, you know, from what we... I feel like from what we see about, um, you know, ki- like, like, cu- like kitchen, like, you know, culture and um, being a chef, it feels like a very male dominated arena. And so yes. what, is, what has it been like for you as a woman, and especially as a woman of color, um, you know, coming up in this field to being where you are, you know, being Great the question. top chef? Ah, it's been really, really tough, actually. Yeah. Like, because it is a male. It's like a white male-dominated field. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a matter of proving yourself over and over and over and over again. So, like, having to be, like, 10 to 20 times better than everybody else in the kitchen. Mm. So, like, when I worked at Gordon Ramsay... Like, for instance, you work on stations. So there's, like, the salad station, uh, the meat station, the fish station, um, and then the garnish station. That's, like, the side dishes and stuff. And uh, the restaurant was in a hotel. So I started off in room service. Oh, wow. So I worked in room service for, like, a year, Mm -hmm. making burgers and steaks and roasted chicken and stuff. Then I moved to the salad station. I worked there for a year. But it's like these other like little young guys coming fresh out of culinary school, they'll work on salad station like three months. Mm-hmm. And then like then the next three months, they're on fish station. Then the next three months, they're on the meat station. And then after that, they're the sous chef. It's like, wow, you made it. Yeah. Wow. Like I was wow. on the, the road less traveled and had to stay on these stations longer. But the good part about it was... I mastered these stations. If uh-huh. you making all of these intricate dishes on a salad station, which we had like at one point like sixteen different starters coming from that station, oh, wow. like you become really, really good at it. So I became really, really good at making intricate plates. Mm. Oh, then that's I moved amazing. to the fish station. Like I could cook fish like I don't know who's the best fish cook in the world, but, like, I cook fish like nobody's business. I can cook meat wow. perfectly. I can make sauces perfectly. Sure. So it worked to my benefit, actually. You know, like, they were putting me, like, on the, I guess, the black girl program in the uh, <laughs> in the European kitchen. But mm. it worked to my advantage because I went from that job as a line cook I worked there for four and a half years, and I went straight to my first executive chef position, Wow! which was where I met Cynthia. Yeah. Wow. So before that, I was a line cook, and then I went from there to running the kitchen. Now, how does that look like uh, when you when you uh, go for a new job? Do you have to, like, audition, or, like, do you have to? Uh, yeah. Cook a well, bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah usually uh, a lot of stuff. for chef positions or for a line cook or, well, usually for a chef position, yeah. like, You'll have to go and do like a tasting. Okay. Um, a tasting. So. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Cook for them. That's like your resume. Your resume could say whatever. It's just like. It's what you do in the moment. Yeah. yeah. Cool. But that's an amazing achievement. What are your mm-hmm. aspirations from here, here on, from where you're at? Um, well, right now I'm growing my spice business. Yeah. Uh, my yeah. plan is to. Um, get a lot of retail clients so like i want to be in grocery stores like i want to be in a lot of grocery stores high-end grocery stores but also grocery stores in like low-income neighborhoods just to give people like healthier Healthier. options like you could buy this one that you've been eating for like 20 years yeah and makes your ankle swell or you could buy mine 
and it's all natural. You, you, know? you need to make a little infomercial about the ankle <laughs> swelling. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know, we don't think about these, the condiments and things, you know, that we add to our food that, yeah. that don't add to our health. Yes. This, uh, what's the one? Uh, Old Bay, right? It's yeah. everywhere. But, right. you know, I'm sure they're cutting corners, you know. Right, like, I'm sure right. They, you know, they fill it up with, like, a little bit of that extra, Well, you know. anything that has, like, a two, three-year shelf life, yeah. you should have you questions. Go. Very much so. You know? Very so much so. It's like, you think about about the old days, the way what they used to preserve things before they had refrigeration, they would mm-hmm. preserve meat with salt. They would cure it. Exactly. You know, they would preserve everything with salt. Nothing has changed. They just have longer names right. with salt. Mm. So, what a, a natural product like yours? What's the shelf life of that? Uh, about a year for okay. most of them. Maybe a little less than a year for the ones like uh, Chipotle lime salt, because, mm-hmm. like I said, it's like actual lime juice in there and lime zest and then also uh lemon herb salt the same thing actual lemon juice in there and lemon zest and whatever you're doing to keep it from anti the the anti-clumping thing yeah so i know that in other products they use anti-clumping agents yes and you don't do that no so whatever you're doing to keep it actually dry and like powdery awesome thank you just keep it in a cool, dry place. Oh, it's Shake that it. simple. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There keep you it go. out of the sun. So we don't need all those chemicals. No, no. But I want to move on to, uh, which soon I'm going to move on to uh, ATC uh, sauce blends. Ooh. I want to do sauces <gasps> Oh yeah. next. Yeah. And then I also want to do meals, like prepared meals. That you could buy in the store. Well, this is you putting it out there into the so-called universe. Oh, Oh, yeah. Manifesting it. it. Manifesting it. it. Yeah. And do you have any travel plans next for more, more in, uh, you know, Um, inspiration? I'm planning to head back to South Africa soon. Wow. Because when I was there, I was in Johannesburg last year, and I taught a class at a uh, culinary school, GHB, Culinary and Pastry School. Do you do teaching here, too? Uh... Not knife so skills much. at least because I need some knife skills. Sure, classes. I do. I do <laughs> private classes, not out of school, but I do private classes for sure. If you saw the way I hold a knife, I think you'd. I would faint probably. You'd probably faint. <laughs> Just don't hold it like. Don't put your <laughs> finger on top. Oh, like that's what I tell my line cooks in the kitchen. Oops. Like, who are you pointing at with your finger on top of your I knife? I thought that was for stability. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. See, I'm over, here, I'm, I'm over here. Just, I'm over here. Like, no. Yeah. So, I don't know what I'm talking about. I really don't. But. We can do a knife holding class right now. Okay. I'm left handed, so basically, this is your blade. This is the other side of the blade, and this is the handle. So you want to have them? She's holding the iPhone right now, y'all. Yes, <laughs> iPhone, iPhone knife. So you got these three fingers right here holding the handle, and then these two on the blade. And so, so you have the, total so you control. Rock, the finger, rock yeah, the finger thing. and the thumb is like right on the blade. Mm-hmm. And, and so you're holding, oh, so you're holding it. And you're rocking it like a boat. Right rocking now? it like a boat. That's All right, it. Away from your body. Away from the body. Away from your body. Knife away from the body is a great tip. You get yes. that, Jack? <laughs> Get that. Oh, I'm hearing that. Knife yeah. away right, from the right, body. Cool. Everybody, everybody's going to do a little better tonight. You, My knife skills are horrible. <laughs> horrible. I got four students, three students right <laughs> now. Right? Knife, there you knife, go. Eris, the chef's knife skills. I got class. my knives in my backpack. Wow. So speaking they of knives, knives are super expensive, and you've got to carry them expensive. with you and just monitor them all the time. Right? Yes, they are like babies. They are oh, like wow. your children. Wow. So in the kitchen, they are so coveted. It's like... Nobody touch my knife. Wow. Every what, chef has their own knife. What happens if you if you touch chef's knife? Like if you, <laughs> they will I use mean, it on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it's sharing. Like people ask, like, oh, can I use your knife? But like you just don't. It's not good kitchen etiquette to just uh-huh. walk through the kitchen and be like, Oh, this looks like a good knife to use. Exactly. <laughs> this looks oh, like a sharp expensive here's a knife. knife. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Here's a knife. I'll use this one. I had yeah. just gotten a brand new knife. I was working at some catering company and I was looking for it on the table, like, oh snap, somebody <gasps> stole it. Oh no. I look around and the porter is using my brand new Japanese oh. knife to open a box. Oh, oh. 
I lost oh. it. Did you I lose used it? words that you I went Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. You went Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, that was before Gordon Ramsay. That's why I liked him so much because I identified with him. <laughs> exactly. He's like my spirit animal. See, no. you, you are very, you're, see, you're very calm and centered right now. But in oh, the yeah. kitchen, it can get like you can get oh, different. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. I, you know okay. what? I, I've, I've seen I've seen Eris heated. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't don't don't. Yeah. Hey. Don't make her. Yeah. Don't, don't make her go there. Yeah. Let's stay here. Let's stay Let's this, stay here. This is what everybody likes. It's a very, yeah. it's a very relaxed vibe in right. the room. No one gets hurt. <laughs> no one gets hurt. Yeah. Now, if you have one one lovely tip for us to consider when we cook our food, to consider, you know, as we're doing our setting or like, you know, just the whole experience. So I would suggest that uh, if you're cooking at home, to one, be organized. Okay. Mm. A lot of people don't like to cook at home because they're like, oh, it takes so much time. But if you organize, you can cook a lot faster. So organization in your home kitchen could mean maybe pre-slicing your onions and your garlic and maybe okay. keeping it in the freezer and then you just pull that out and you could saute it right away. You got your base. Another thing I would suggest, too, is to taste your food while you're cooking. Oh. Don't just trust recipes. If they're telling you to put a pinch of salt in a entire on an entire pot roast, mm. that is a lie. <laughs> That's stupid. Especially that you yeah. should be stupid. putting yeah. a pinch of ATC spice. But in people do it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Use I love that. ATC so taste spice as, blends. as you go along. So tell us your website because we got to wrap this show up. Yeah, so my website is eristhechefcooks.com. That's A I R I S. The Chef Cooks dot com, and you can find a link on there uh, to my Spice Blends page. It's separate, but that that website is even longer than Aris the Chef Cooks. So I'll just keep you with <laughs> that one. <laughs> and on Facebook, we can find you. Oh yeah, on Facebook, uh, my Facebook page I believe is uh, Aris the Chef Spice Blends, and I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Aris the Chef. Super endorsing Aris's Spice Blends. Check I'm it buying out. it. I'm buying it. Thank you. I'm buying it. Thank I'm going to stick my finger in it right now. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for this episode of Primary Food. Thank you for being here, Aris. Thank you for having me. All I right. had fun. Thanks for listening to this program on HeritageRadioNetwork.org. You can find all of our archived programs on our website or as podcasts in the iTunes store by searching Heritage Radio Network. You can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Heritage underscore Radio. You can email us questions at any time at info at HeritageRadioNetwork.org. Heritage Radio Network is a nonprofit organization. To donate and become a member, visit our website today. Thanks for listening.